Right, we're up next, Chris. Are we? Yep. Land Rover Discovery Sport manual. It down a little bit on the front one side and hit right down Bonus the other time. side. Looks really bad. Loads of little dings around it. Smash windscreen. Engine doesn't start. Our kind of thing. So here we go. Your watch item is next on the block. New bidder. This is a hot lot. Five. That's not bad, is it? Bonus time! Bonus time, for God's sake. Is that on pure style? It is, yeah. See it at the top there oh, in yeah, grey. Oh, yeah, pure Oh, Oh, lovely. Nice. nice one, mate. So, of course, buying a high-value item like that car, even though we've won it at the right money, we did do a car vertical before we bought that vehicle. Purely down to the fact that the last couple we bid on, i.e. the little Berlingo people carrier, was categorised twice, only showing once. And also the Ford Focus we recently went to purchase was two categories as well. So mileage okay, theft okay, accidents, finance okay. So it is got that reported accident on there. Seventh for the first 2015 United Kingdom car. So we haven't got to worry about it being written off in any other countries. Couple of MOT advisories there. This check was performed in all of these countries, United Kingdom, Canada, Czech Republic, Romania, just to name a few. There's the mileage graph there, all going in the right direction. And a little bit further down, we've got damage detected there. Category S write-off can be repaired following structural damage. You can use this vehicle again if it's repaired to a roadworthy condition. And as we know, me and Chris don't accept anything less than perfect on them anyway. So I want to thank Car Vertical once again for the continued support supplying these checks to the channel. To benefit from a 10% discount off your check, use the link in the description or the code SR10 from any so browser. I've just arrived, guys, and for the first time, well, it's not the first time, but you all know the numbers on this car before we've even made a video on it because you see us win it there on the bid, so I've just kept Monster bidding it. We sort of set up a budget of what we was going to spend and we won it underneath that budget. So we're quite happy, mate, right? Yeah, well, it's probably worse than we thought. It's actually a lot worse than what we it? thought, it if was. being honest. It but is. still, still very repairable and still a bit of profit in this one for us, I think. Yeah, Definitely. It was, cheap, it was cheap. So first things first, as soon as it arrived, I couldn't stop him. Chris has got the battery off and he wants to get that on a good charge. So in the pictures, we did look through, and you could see there was a couple of scuffs. Yeah. I mean, even they're a little bit worse than what we was expecting yeah, yeah. because they're not actually just little scuffs. They're quite nasty dents, actually. Mm. And then that scuff there yeah. is quite a nasty dent. Probably what looks really bad, that mirror's actually okay. It just wants a new cap on it. I think it's going to survive. Yeah. The indicator's still in it. The windscreen has a huge hole in it. We've already sort of, I was chatting to someone and I sort of, and we put two and two together and we sort of half know the story for this one. So we're going to elaborate on that as we walk around it. So you can probably notice both front tyres. Now, this is the worst of the damage here, which is both of those passenger doors. And you can see we've already pulled that cover off. You've had that door open, Chris, and it is very, very minimal. It has just touched the B post. Just a tiny bit there. Just a tiny little bit. Just a little, little tiny bit. So no major. major seal damage. Guys, we're getting to the inside in a moment. But yeah, 
quarter panel, very, very repairable. Just that one dent in it. The back bumper, the boot lid. The boot lid's actually got a nasty dent in it there and now. Broken lights. There is a little bit there, yeah. That is a dent as well, it's isn't it? Repaint, isn't it? it is going to be a lot of repaint. It's got the glass roof in it. So, just looking at the other side, let's go through it. You're going to like this one, guys. This car, stolen, believe it or not. T-Pack. And that's obviously not worked. And if you look at the tyres, you could actually see them, Chris, couldn't you? Yes. All of the puncture marks, it's actually had one of those stingers thrown out in front of it. And once the stinger's gone out, they've carried on driving it and actually driven it through a fence or crashed through a fence. Hence what has caused all of the, the light damage on the front of it. So broke the headlight, broke the corner of the bumper off. The washer bottle actually looks like it's okay. Um, the bonnet, again, it's got a, a lot of scratches on it and a couple of marks. Yeah worse yeah do you think that's going to be repairable oh is it so again yeah i mean it's a lot of stuff and then you can see all of these scratches all over it is that is that is that up it is up isn't it yeah it is up slightly there yeah massively it's just a tiny little bit no a lot of work but we bid on it a lot of bits i think it is a lot of bits but you know it is what it is. And hopefully, if we can get some tyres on it, get that battery charged up. Get it running and driving. Get it running and driving. And, um, because this is down, it was down as vandalised, yeah. stolen, non-runner. I don't think it was actually listed as stolen, but it is a stolen recovered vehicle. Um, so it's categorised category S, and that is purely down to the amount of parts that this car is going to need. But... Where there's a will, there's a way. We know a lot of people now. We're going to get on the phone. We're going to call Silver Lake. We're going to search through online and just pick bits and bobs up for this one and hopefully get it back on the road. In the back, <clears throat> Chris noticed it's actually a seven-seater. Got the rear seat belts in it. All of the seats actually look really nice. It just needs a good vacuum. And then... You was actually looking for the handbrake release there. Yeah, that's why the gate is up. But it is a six-speed manual car, which is quite rare for a Land Rover, I should yeah. think, isn't it? Yeah. Nasty, isn't it? Yeah, nasty. Where that, that pole's come through there, guys. Fence, fence post. post. Well, there was bits of shards of wood in here, so yeah, it was yeah. definitely a fence post. It has missed this sat-nav screen and that. So, I mean, mate, this is getting on already and we're only just having a little look around. So, yeah. should we get it jacked up? Yeah. You see you start the other side. Yeah. Let's get the wheels off. Yeah. I'm not. We're not going to go and buy two new tyres for this. We're going to put a couple of runners on it. Yeah, that's Because right. we don't know how long it's going to be sitting around to collect bits for it. Well, so I think those wheels probably need refurbing. They've got a few marks on them. They so are going to need a refurb, aren't they? Just try and get a couple of... Um, Warns, we? Yeah, that well, was just a ones, yeah, so. just a couple of runners on it. Yeah. So let's get that jacked up first of all and get them wheels off. Get it so it's at least manoeuvrable. It did come with both of the keys. So hopefully, I mean, they've got it down as a non-runner. They had access to the battery. So I'm not really sure what's going on there. Let's get a good bit of charge in that and see how we get on. Well, that was Andy, guys. Chris went into the archives deep down in the back of a container and found two old 18-inch Hurricane wheels with good tyres on them. So they're just going to be perfect to stick on there. The profile is different on them. These are 55s. The others, the originals off of it are 60s. But they're going to be perfect to get us out of trouble just for the meantime, aren't they? So let's chuck them in the back of the van. Go and get them loaded up. Fitted rather. I actually took both wheels round and both tyres. And the wheel from this side actually had... A dent on the inside of it and i thought you know what it's a bit false economy waste of money anyway we've got a spare and it was 10 quid to have it swapped over so we've saved the tenner by just putting the spare on for now and we've got one of the tires on our rim what chris actually looked quite good yeah one of the tires there what chris had on them hurricanes and we've got that fitted on there so it is now on its wheels but not without a bit of bad news straight away you can see the batteries on 
Chris has fully charged it. I'm just going to get him to pop back out with the keys. Have you took the keys out of it, Chris? Sorry, guys, I've just run and got the keys there. And as soon as you get in it, I mean, they're really, really close to the reader there. Put your foot on the brake. And there, smart key, not recognised. Reposition or place as shown. So I've tried that. I've, I've placed them underneath here. But we're still getting exactly the same. So Chris started having a look in the back. And he said, it looks like there's a few fuses missing. And there is a couple of big wires in here as well, underneath there. Let's just try and move some of that out of the way. See those grey wires down there? Now, I've just got off the phone to Aidan, and he said, yeah, Rob, very, very common on these Land Rovers when they steal them. Chris, do you remember the name of that box? Did you say key keyless entry module or... KVM, I think, keyless vehicle module. He said what they do is put their own one in it and then they've already got a key programmed to it, so they just drive off in the car. So the keyless module is missing, the KVM. And Aidan just said to me, Rob, you will be opening up a can of worms trying to find a second-hand one. There's so many different part numbers. They're not mega spiteful from the dealer. Give them a call. Get one of them ordered up and ring me back once you got it. I've just rung the dealer and they've got it in stock. They've got a few on the shelf. So obviously a common thing to go. He also told me to look behind here and make sure that that telematrix unit is in there. And it is, as you can see. That's got the SIM card in it. And that's for the SOS button, etc. So I'm going to need to go over and pick that up. And then he's going to come really later on this evening and actually program in the KVM and program these two keys back to this car. And that is the reason, yes guys, all of that dog food was in here when we bought it. That is the reason why the keys don't work. And of course, really I should have thought about it. It's it's stolen vehicle. Of course the keys are gonna have been cloned. So we'll have to just pick up once he gets here. But like right, Chris just pointed out, there's a few fuses missing there, so I'm going to need to go through and just double check all of that. Because when he comes to program it, we can't have this holding him back while there's all fuses missing. So well, I've seen the cover for this. I'll keep using that as a... Well, I've seen the cover for this section somewhere in the car. So I'm going to dig that out and hopefully that'll have all the fuse layout on there and the relays. No messing about, guys. Straight to the dealer. It's local for us. And we've got the KVM in there. Total with the VAT, £155.48. But like Aidan said, there's so many different part numbers. You get the wrong one, you've had it. So you might as well just go and get the correct one. So we get that back, get him to come over and program it in and keep my fingers crossed. Guys, I said in the last video, Aidan was a hungry young man. And quite a lot of you asked me what I meant by that. Where's your watch, Aidan, or your phone? What time is it? seven o'clock it's about seven yeah, seven, 7 p.m on a thursday evening uh, i've just come out and aiden said rob i'll come now for you i've just finished 1851 1851 and he's drove all the way from london and he's going to crack on and get these keys done for us so you he's got his he's ready he's ready let's get it done it is what do you mean so has it got chrome on the door handle or not i can't see any chrome on it no so Aidan's programmed the KVM. There is some, obviously, there's elements of this. You don't want me to show on video. This yeah, is your course, trade, isn't it? But he's programmed the KVM to the car. And now he's going through the procedure of reprogramming both of those keys. Exactly. But there's so much for him to go through first. Like, it does a full sig false ignition. Forces the ignition exactly. to come on. It just done it then, did it, on its own? No, nah, it just, it won't do it yet. We're just going to download another bit of a software file for the KVM. It's a lot of work, yeah, it's isn't a lot it? Of work, yeah. And that's a lot to remember, of Aiden. Course, I, of course. I mean, this is our trade. Yeah. What we do I wouldn't later. last five minutes, I don't think, because <laughs> I struggle to find my way home, mate, let alone remember all of that. But So, what are you saying about the door handle? Were they the ones with the chrome so inside if, or it's so it, it keyless? You, yeah, so, no. So, I'll tell you how you know if you've got remote um, keyless entry. 
So you know the KVM that we bought? Yeah. So if it's got three plugs, yeah. that means it's got keyless entry, passive entry. That only had two. That only had two. So that means it doesn't have passive entry. Like our Passat at home, as soon as I go near the door handle, yeah, so, it unlocks. So that's got passive entry then. Right. But this vehicle is not coming equipped with passive entry. Right, So you okay. need to tell the KVM, the keyless vehicle module, a bit of the configuration yourself. So it'll ask you if it's got Chrome or if it's not got Chrome. Right, okie dokie. Like and then it'll download the software file. Yeah. Using obviously the... the JLR tool, Jaguar Land Rover tool, and then obviously programming the KVM. I can see your lights. Yeah, so this is um, this is just like a, a box that... You a know, bar, it, yeah. It when it gets bar. to the end, it's complete. Yeah, and then it might go again and, and stuff like that. But at the moment, as you can see, the current uh, the process is currently locating the required software parts. So it's going online, right. Range Rover server, okay. and download And that's uh, why you wanted to connect to the internet exactly, here. Exactly, yeah. You need right. to have a strong connection, and also your battery needs to be on green. Right, certain things that you need well, to well, we fully charge that yeah, today, yeah, yeah. so yeah, otherwise, you'll be on amber or red to yeah. indicate that the battery status is very low. And right, shall, and we, shall like I cut and we'll wait till yeah, we get yeah, nearer yeah, the time? Yeah, yeah, definitely. yeah, but I do remember when I bought Clara first Land Rover Evoque, uh -huh. I got a train all the way to London uh -huh. and I bought it from a couple that was emigrating uh -huh. while well, they was going traveling. Uh -huh. And when I arrived, they only had one key and they couldn't yeah. find the other one. Yeah. And the lady opened the garage drawer and said, this is my parents' house and there's my life in the garage. Yeah. So she had no key. Yeah. But I called the locksmith yeah. and he come out and he yeah. went, I'll look after you here, Rob. Yeah. And he plugged it in. He went, yeah. bang, 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 30 seconds. He 30 went, seconds, there's yeah. your new key. So I'll explain to you something, Rob. So this can go out to the audience as well. So the first keyless entry vehicles on the Range Rovers they didn't come with a secured KVM. So the KVM, the, the KVM in short terms is keyless vehicle module. Yeah. So the keyless vehicle module didn't come locked. So after 2013 or 63, between 13 and 63 is when Range Rover started introducing the KVM being locked. Right. Which made it harder for, for people for us to, to steal. Make keys yeah. And for people to steal. So funny you said that. Yeah. Because that car mm -hmm. was a 61 2011. Yeah. And when I asked him to come back and do a spare yeah. for the 15 wedge I bought, yeah. he said, it'll be a lot more yeah, money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, so, make, that makes sense. So, 60, so up to 2013 and 63, it's all OBD. Plug it in. All right. Few clicks on a few machines and, and it's all programmed yeah. in. But after 30, uh, 63 and 13, I've actually been to 14, which is still on the older version. Right. And, and the older version, is much 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 easier you can literally just plug it in and in yeah. 30 seconds the yeah, keys programmed yeah but after 13 and 63 or 14 let's just say just to be on the safe side yeah will come 100 percent secured yeah and obviously us so this vehicle was 100 percent secured yeah, so this vehicle was 100 percent secured 100 i don't know mm -hmm. too much about it mm -hmm. on we're only guests mm -hmm. playing guesswork mm -hmm. here yeah. but the kvm's missing yeah they're the original keys. Yeah. So this car was stolen from outside someone's house. Yeah. Yeah. The police have got it back. Yeah. But yeah. The, the people that stole it didn't yeah. have those two keys you've exactly. got. They're exactly. the originals. Exactly. So the owner has sent them back to back the to insurance, insurance company. Yeah. So what did the people do to nick this car? They have put their own KVM in it, I thought, no, no, no. with a key program. No, no, no. So I'll explain to you. So obviously in the black market... There's a, a Range Rover tool. It's called a Fast Start tool. I've heard, I've watched actually watched a YouTube yeah. video. So and, yeah. how it works is is um, oh we're no, dancing. Not yet. Soon. Well, it's Soon. never said Land yeah. Rover there before. So watch this. I think it should turn it on any minute now, but I'm not too sure. So it's just doing a reset on the instrument panel cluster here. Yeah. So it's just initializing the module. Sorry to interrupt you. No, no, caught my fine. attention. So going back onto the subject is. Um, Obviously, even as much as technology goes, there will always be technology catching up yeah. to it. You know, yeah. our, At, our tools catching up to it. Absolutely. The thieves catching up to it. Yeah. Or, you know, and stuff like that. So no matter what you do, there will always be um, some as sort of... As fast as they bring out new technology, the thieves someone's... will also come yeah, and, and, bring, yeah. and, bring, and bring tools out. Of course. So what they do, they plug the tool in and the so alarm is going off. Yeah? Yeah. So the alarm will go off. As soon as you plug the OBD in, the alarm will cut out. Right. And then after that, the ignition will come on. They'll press the... They, they've got two... One, two keys, depending on the tool that they've got. And they'll just hold it against the steering column lock because you've got an emergency start there also. Yeah. And then that key will automatically... Um, map Read. itself to that vehicle. Unbelievable. Only to start an emergency start. And then once they do that... That's all they want, though, is an emergency start. Yeah. And, and, and they'll take KVMs out. 
telematics out, if you remember. Arsenal yeah, had a yeah, you did. And I've they mentioned stop, that. They would try their absolute best to stop you, the owner, from starting the car back up. Yeah. So the other day I went to a Verlard 2019. Yeah. Stolen, recovered. Yeah. So they've ripped all the car apart and they couldn't find a truck up. And the guy had an air tag in the boot, an Apple air tag. Oh, really? And they found the Apple air tag. Yeah. So they got it through the Apple air tag. And when I went there, all the telematic wire was cut and everything. Yeah. I rewired it and the car started again. Oh, and lovely. Stuff. So. Yeah, Aiden, so I've took too much of your no time worries, already, so I'll no let worries. you finish, and, yeah, yeah. and then actually Chris is not here, he's out this evening, but yeah. what we'll do once you're done, yeah. we'll actually let you fire it up, no and we'll hear it for no the first worries. time. That's fine, Rob. Hopefully, Hopefully, it starts. Hopefully, fingers crossed. <laughs> Mate, thing. honestly, this is yeah. it's probably the most beaten up car we've yeah, ever yeah, bought. Even I said you were shocked yeah, when you shocked, arrived, yeah, Aiden yeah. said... Wow, yeah, you know, what are you two up to? But this is us, you this know. This is the game. Yeah, this we'll let you game. carry on. Yeah, so this is what we was talking about, the uh, false ignition. So the tool will actually tell you to switch ignition off. Yeah. And then it will tell you the following application will automatically control the vehicle ignition. And now it's... Oh, yeah. See. And the steering locks yeah. come off. So oh, right off, quick. Copyright. Copyright. Definitely. Yeah, we have to have that off. Yeah, so the tool will obviously control the whole car. Until everything's all programmed in. Oh, and stuff. mate, that's brilliant. How much diesel we got? None. None. It's empty. None. That's probably why they got caught. <laughs> <laughs> we'll let you carry on, no mate. Worries. So, Aiden's just finished completing. You've programmed both of those keys. Of keys yeah. We've got the ignition on now, steering locks off. Exactly. And it's made all this beeping noise. So, you reckon it's, it's good? It's going to be ready to start now. You sure? Yeah, 100%. We can't run it for long because so it ain't got no, no water in it. But, no three, two, one, go. Yes. Nice one, Aiden. Good stuff. He's done it again, guys. And of course, I will put his link in the description down below. And Good stuff, away. mate. And it's thank about you. eight o'clock, so you want to get home for your tea. Definitely, mate. Right, 100%. thank you. He's back now, guys. He started it up and he said, I can't believe you haven't moved it into a better position, Rob. Left it in the middle of the yard there. So he's going to get that. Seems to be driving all right. The clutch feel okay. Obviously, they've thrashed the hell out of it, haven't they? Probably. Yeah, you can hear the bumper dragging. Oh, and that bit of suspension breaking. Yeah. You might as well whip that bit of um, front bumper off, exactly shall we? Oh, you are going to do that? I'm just going to stick the nose in there and do it. Oh, if you didn't hear Chris there, guys, he's actually going to stick the nose in there and do it. It just makes it easier moving it about, doesn't it? If it ain't got that hanging on the floor. I'll leave you to it, mate. I'm going to run out of the shop and get a cold drink. Do you want one? Sounds like a plan, mate. Do you want one? Yeah, love it. I'll pop down the beach again. I mean, round the shop. Yeah. No, I'll, <laughs> that makes you laugh every time, that one, Chris. I popped uh, down the shop, and I've been doing a bit of running around with another vehicle, and Chris has genuinely got carried away with this. He couldn't help it. He said, we might as well get like all of that damaged stuff. And all of that, there was bits of it falling out. As you... We have got a skip. We have got a skip at the moment. Soon. Yeah, it is. So any last little bits. As he was driving, though, there was little bits falling off everywhere, weren't there? Wasn't there, rather. So you've actually pulled that bracket off, which is yeah. for the... What's that? I forgot the name Keyless. of it. Keyless. blah, 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 that Aiden done for us last night. KVM. KVM. So they'd actually bent this all out of shape, and that KVM goes in the back. Yeah. Then the fuse box goes over the top. It's going to be an easy little repair, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, but I'm just going that, to straighten that all out first. A bit, a good yeah. bit of glue will probably do that, won't it? Chris is going to straighten all this out. You can actually see how crooked it all is and get that bolted in. You've also had a right old good clean out in there, haven't you? Well, no, I've only started. What was that? A whole tip, a whole can of hand cleaner. Like the top had come out of it and it's like a Vaseline based yeah. and it was everywhere and plenty of dog food. You can see it all in there, guys. It's definitely like a Vaseline-based 
and Chris has started vacuuming it out. I mean, I think earlier on in the video, you saw all the dog hair as well. So he has made quite a nice job of getting all of that sorted out. Just trying to get the inside. Uh, is that what we're trying to achieve here, Chris? Just try and get all the inside. Get all the inside back together. Yeah, see what we're missing. Yeah, definitely. Ideal. You know the big cover that goes over the actual fuse box once it's on? I did find that. It is in there. So, guys, that is going to be the end of today's video on the Land Rover. Let us know what you think in the comments section down below. I know a lot of people are going to think we're mad, but we're going to try, just get a few bits for it. I mean, if we got a silver wing, a couple of silver doors, it'd save a lot of basing up on the inside. We're in no rush. This car hasn't got to be back out on the road next week. So we're just slowly in the background going to be looking for the parts. I know quite a lot of you are going to be anxious to send us eBay links of people breaking these. Guys, I will already be trailing through there. So please treasure your time, honestly. I, if, the, if there's bits for it on eBay, I will find them. I have found a silver one on there that says breaking. And I've rung him up and he hasn't got any parts at all. So don't panic. Right, Chris, anything to add? I think so, mate. That's the end, yeah? That is the end. That is the end, guys. We'll see you in the next one.